Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and this is the electrical question of the day. According to the NEC, what are the minimum number of 20 amp small appliance branch circuits required for a kitchen in a dwelling unit? And the correct answer is two. Now let's imagine that we're in this kitchen and we're really curious about how to wire it. How many circuits does it need? Are they allowed to be 15 amp? Can they be tapped off the living room? What's the score here? Well, let's dive into it. We're going to head today to 210.52B1. But before we dive into that code, we're going to pull back and punt. We're actually going to head over to 210.11C1. And that's where we get the initial requirement for these two 20 amp small appliance branch circuits. And the code states that they are required to serve the receptacles that are laid out in 210.52B1, which is where we're back to today. 210.11C1 requires them, and then 210.52B1 starts to show you how to use them. Let's dive into the paraphrase code language. In the pantry, breakfast room, dining room, kitchen, or similar areas of a dwelling unit, the two or more 20 amp small appliance branch circuits that were required back in 210.11C1 must serve all wall and floor receptacle outlets that are specified in 210.52A, which is talking about general wall space in these areas, and all countertop outlets specified in 210.52C, and the receptacle outlets for refrigeration equipment. Let's first recap about, about what we are allowed to do. So first off, we have two circuits at a minimum, and they must serve the following locations. Pantries, breakfast rooms, dining rooms, kitchens, or similar areas of a home. So you are literally, literally allowed to take these two circuits and go, let's say, one of them to the left side of this countertop and one of them to the right. And off the right side, you're literally allowed to hop off, head to the breakfast room, the pantry, and the dining room, and wire all of those receptacles as well. Then let's say if you want to hop off this left-hand side, and you want to go wire the refrigerator, and then do some of the kitchen wall space. That's okay too. You're allowed to do that with, them circuits, with those circuits, and it's absolutely okay. But let's imagine we want to pull a third circuit to this kitchen for the island, we'll say. And we want to use it to service the two receptacles that are on the ends of the island in this fake scenario. Well, you're allowed to do that too. But the most important thing that you must remember is that that also is required to be a 20 amp circuit. And it's not allowed to go anywhere except for those specific areas right there. And that's where a lot of people get off the rails in the field. If we go back to 210.11C1 technically C1 through 4. C1 requires those 20 amp circuits for kitchens. And then when you go 2 through 4, it requires the bathrooms to be on a 20 amp circuit, the laundry room, and also the garage. Let's take the laundry room as an example to expound on this point. If you decide, all right, so the code calls for you to pull one 20 amp circuit to your laundry room for the receptacles. That's great. You only have to have one. If you decide to pull another one, for the receptacles in the laundry room, it must also be 20 amps and it must also follow all the requirements that are laid out in 210.11C. The same thing is that it's the same thing with the kitchen. If you decide to pull a third circuit for these general areas, that's okay, but it's technically kitchen circuit three. It must be 20 amps and it must follow all of the other rules that are laid out for these specific circuits. I used to pull a dedicated dining room circuit, but it's technically not a dining room circuit because it must be 20 amps and it must only serve those areas. It would technically be kitchen circuit three or kitchen circuit four, five, six, seven. And for all of those kitchen circuits, we have to be careful when we're back in our load calculation section because each one of those count as 1500 VAs. But that's a lesson for another day. The other thing that I want to watch out for here, so these 20 amp, circuits are allowed to serve all of those areas they're not allowed to serve any other outlets with very few exceptions that are listed in part two of this code but i want to go to one of the exceptions for this specific code now if we go down below 210.52b1 exception number two it says in addition to the required receptacle specified in 210.52 a receptacle outlet to serve a specific appliance is permitted to be supplied from an individual branch circuit, these are defined terms, 
and it's allowed to be rated 15 amps or greater. What this code is saying is that on top of the two required 20 amp branch circuits, you are also allowed to run an individual branch circuit, and you need to look up the definition for that in Article 100. You're allowed to run an individual branch circuit that's rated 15 amps or greater. What this is stating is that on top of your two kitchen circuits, if you wanted to run an individual circuit for this specific blender, you are allowed to do that, and it's allowed to be allowed to be 15 amps or greater, but it shall serve no other outlets. It must be an individual branch circuit. At the same time, you're allowed to pull an individual circuit over for your KitchenAid and make it 15 amps. So if you're an installer or an inspector, just because you see 14-gauge 15-amp wire in a kitchen doesn't necessarily mean that that's a code violation. As long as they've satisfied their two small appliance circuits, you're also allowed to run individual branch circuits on top of that as long as you've satisfied those two. So just to recap today, you're required to have a minimum of two 20-amp branch circuits in a kitchen. They're allowed to serve pantries, breakfast rooms, dining rooms, and kitchens or similar areas. And you can work that similar area out with your inspector. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. I want you to know that I'm praying for you today, and if there's anything that you need from me, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.